Welcome Game Chasers everywhere to episode 16 of The Collecting Confidant with your host, Gunstar Hero. And I'm back this week with a classic, in fact, a game that almost never saw the light of day and thankfully for the benefit of gamers everywhere was restored and re-released. This week we're talking about Clockwork Aquario, which was developed by Weststone Bit Entertainment, better known as the makers of the Wonder Boy and Monster World series, and was published by ININ Games in conjunction with StrictlyLimitedGames.com. Of course, Strictly Limited is handling the physical re-release of this game. It was originally put out on the PS4 and Switch last year. Some copies are still remaining, and you can get them on eBay and different sites. But of course, this week we want to talk about the PS5 version, which is now available for pre-order with a limited number of copies remaining. There's no deadline. There's just a certain amount of copies, and when they're gone, these tend to go up in price significantly. So if you're interested in this game, you wanna have it for your collection, you may wanna act fast. Let's talk about the game, why it's cool, why it's historically significant, and why you should consider adding this to your radar. So the gameplay itself is pretty basic. It's a 2D arcade side-scrolling pixel art platformer loosely inspired by games like Super Mario and actually directly inspired by Wonder Boy 3 Monster Lair, an older title by Weststone. This game has either one player or two player co-op modes, three selectable characters, and five stages, each containing a sub boss, which will drop a key that to then unlock the room to fight the main stage boss. And I will warn you that if you're one of those gamers that puts a premium on games that are longer, well, maybe you might wanna skip this one because this is an older arcade title and can be completed realistically in under 30 minutes. So it's not very long, but there is some challenge here and some very cool, unique mechanics that give it some freshness even today. So what's really cool about the gameplay is not only can you stomp on enemies' heads like Mario Brothers style, but you can also slap and grab them and then throw them in different directions to create these combo chains. And then in addition, if you're playing in like two player co-op mode, you can actually throw each other into the enemies, which I think is kind of cool. And some people have actually compared this to games by treasure in terms of its visual style, like the very mega drivey graphics, and also some of the mechanics, which will make you think of potentially Gunstar Heroes or even Mischief Makers and games of that ilk. Another cool thing about this game is the two hit point life mechanic, which is a nod to Ghosts and Goblins and the fact that every time you get hit, your clothes go into tatters. So I thought that was kind of a neat little nod to games of yesteryear. So in terms of development and history, this game originally started out around 1992, took about two and a half years to complete and was intended to be Weststone Bit Entertainment's final arcade game. They've been working on Wonder Boy games for many years. This was gonna be their final swan song for the arcades. But then, in 1994, when this game was ready, it ran to some issues. Number one, it wasn't testing very well. Arcade game players just weren't feeling this, and I'd say this was the bigger reason because of the time. 1994 was the advent of 3D games, and also the fighting genre had gotten huge. Post Street Fighter 2, post Mortal Kombat. So around that time, players had kind of grown tired of like old 2D side-scrolling pixel art-based games and wanted something a bit fresher. So unfortunately, Weststone decided to scrap the project and then just concentrate solely on console games. And then basically this game for a long time was lost to history. Flash forward about 30 years later though, ININ Games had recently purchased the rights to the title from Sega and then Strictly Limited came out in 2020 with an announcement saying that they had partnered up with ININ in addition to some of the original team at Weststone to restore the game and re-release it. And they said that the game was gonna come out for the PS4 and Switch in 2020. Well, the game got delayed a little bit, was finally released on November 30th, 2021 for the PS4 and Switch. And they've actually announced that Windows and Xbox One will be getting their own versions somewhat later this year, probably around the end of the summer. So look forward to that if you're on those platforms. But in the meantime, you can play this game on the PS4 and Switch and now on the PS5, which I think is really cool. The fact that, that again, it's very historical. Ion Ion Games, who published this, is no stranger to bringing back games from the dead. Specifically, one of their previous re-releases was Ultra Core, which you can also now get in PS5 off Strictly Limited. And this one was a shooter that was intended for the Mega Drive and Genesis and was developed by DICE, better known as the makers of Battlefield. And in addition to ININ, they're the ones who put out the Wonder Boy Anniversary Collection. They put out the Turk and Flashback Collection. They're no stranger to this stuff. So I'm glad to see them getting involved with bringing back this classic to give it its place in history and another really cool thing about this game was the fact that because the development time was so long it actually took the guinness 
Book of World Records record for the longest time between the start of development and release. And specifically, it was 28 years and 81 days. And what's funny about this is that the record was previously held by Duke Nukem Forever, which we all know was in development hell for a long time. Well, sit down, Duke Nukem. This game took the cake, which I think is very cool. Anyway, lots to enjoy if you're into old school 2D side scrollers. If you are a fan of longer games, probably not going to be your bag because this game can be beaten under 30 minutes, but there are different playable characters, plus you can play it two-player co-op, so there are reasons to come back in addition to the historical significance. Let's talk about the physical releases now. So I want to concentrate more on the PS5 re-releases right now, which are available for pre-order via strictlylimitedgames.com. They are both a standard and a collector's edition. So those prices are in euros. The standard version is going for 29.99 euros, which translates roughly to about 30 bucks US as well. So not too much of a difference in terms of the foreign exchange. That one's just the base game, but you can also get the collector's edition for 69.99 euros. And that's gonna include a whole bevy of goodies, including like a collector's box, a soundtrack, an acrylic diorama, some coins, some stickers, a whole bunch of cool stuff you can get if you're a true fan of Clockwork Aquario. But then, if you are a Switch or a PS4 collector, when you go to Strictly Limited, you will notice, unfortunately, that both standard versions are now sold out. If you want to pony up the dole, you can still get the collector's or the ultra versions for a lot more. Uh, specifically, the collector's version for the PS4 or Switch goes for $69.99, and then the ultra version, which includes some collectible figurines, it goes for $129.99. If that seems a little steep to you, you do have some other options if you still wanna go for the PS4 and Switch versions. Number one, you can do the eBay thing. I was cruising through eBay. I noticed that on average, that's going for about 60 to about maybe 90 US, depending on the seller for either the PS4 or Switch. Still a little pricey, but then, if you wanna to go to www.play-asia.com, you can still get the standard versions for much cheaper. In fact, the Switch version is going for $45.99 US and the PS4 version is going for $39.99 US as well. So definitely some good buying options, but if you're a PS5 collector like myself, you'll most likely wanna get the best version you can get. I think that there's a lot to like about this game. I think that the graphical style is really impressive. Like I said, they were trying to really push the limits of the Sega System 18 at the time that this game was released, and it's very colorful. The soundtrack's very charming. There is a lot of challenge. Like I said, it's short, so be warned. If you're looking for something lengthy, you may want to skip this one, but I think overall in terms of the innovative mechanics and the very cool similarities to games by Treasure, which is one of my favorite developers, I think there's something to consider here. So thank you for watching the 16th episode of Collecting Confront with your host, Gunstar Hero. Make sure you like and subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one. Later, game chasers, and peace.